Hey, what's up, guys? This is Team Hard Life Captain Albert Sarcuccia here, and this is the bucket where I'm doing my cell line. This is a 200 pound main line, main line. You can see, there you go. And the drops that we use are 100 pound tests. The hooks that we're using are six odds right here. Got one and a half ounce egg weight right here, so that way um, it's the furthest weight away from the cell line and what it does is it helps ensure that when the cell is deployed that it allows for the uh, the braid to sink on the back end so that way if a boat wants to come behind it it can without getting fouled up with the braid that's being used for the main line so you're hearing commotion or hearing because what i'm doing is i'm setting up the main line so that way as it falls it lays flat and doesn't blow up um, it's been something that uh, if I don't do this, it does make it difficult for the end user as well. But it's good for storage right here. And this is kind of another step as to a step in the direction for us to do this. And you see all the, the white snow, that's actually plastic from when I was cutting the, uh, the slots in the bucket right here. Yeah, gotta fight, gotta fight. Got a lot of stress on my mind It's a nice day to go Yeah, I got a line I'm a caller The whole team Cause Like I said, a lot of the stuff that we use Is not, you know, just readily available For purchase at any store A lot of this is thought up And custom made gear for all of us So This is what I'm doing today Doing uh, the next step in our evolution and then the fa the last one will be of going out and using it. And I'll show you the other step that we had of um, having a welder weld us up a proper uh, tow hitch setup to allow the system to be attached to your truck for those that have trucks. And it does allow it to um, be easily maintained and deployed, which is great. Now we just got to keep moving forward with getting these buckets set up so that way when they're uh, out there fishing, they can store their hooks properly without a whole bunch of mess and tangle ups. And that's another thing too we notice about these crimpers is they tend to uh, shift which side they're on. Like one side will go higher than the other. So occasionally I got to take a, you know, a little hammer or pliers to level it off so that way they get a good proper crimp there so here we go keep it going All right, guys, so right here I'm coming up to the last hook. And I ran out. Oh, great. 
Oh, I didn't. Just kidding. All right. So, the way the system works is we have 30 hooks on this one. It allows us to put multiple different types of bait out there to test the waters of what they're biting on. You can use fish bites, shrimp, crab, mullet, live bait, dead bait. I've seen guys also replace these circle hooks with jig heads and put a bunch of lures out there. We like the circle hooks because it pretty much ensures that the fish won't get gut hooked. Now, you'll notice that this bead set system only has a bead and a swivel. But if you look down here, you'll see where I have the same system set up. Let me zoom in real quick. Where it has this empty swivel right here. Well, that's going to be explained further down. We end up putting floats. You'll also notice that I have different colors of beads down there. And the reason for it is because I've divided the whole system into five groups of five hooks. So there's 30 hooks in this bucket for this system. So each five hooks is separated by a float. That float helps show the angler on shore that when they catch a fish that something's on that group of hooks. Now what they do is they use those hook colors to let them know okay hey in this group say the red ones I had nothing but live bait in the orange ones I had fish bites and the pink and blue I had pink mixed with shrimp and then the, the green one with yellow I had crab flavor mixed with you know crab parts or whatever this opens up the doors for multiple fish bites but also too to give you the advantage of by having multiple different types of baits out there you can figure out what they're hitting on that day and or what species is hitting on what that day too what i mean by that is there's days where i catch trout and sheephead on a specific type shrimp fish bite and then I'll catch black drum and, you know, flounder on another type of fish bite. So, by doing this, it helps you open the doors for more catches of different species of fish. But also, too, so that way you're not, you know, if you're interested in doing more than just, say, redfish or trout, you can actually pinpoint your ability to target those specific species if that's all you want. Or, by opening up the doors, you can get more different types of um, fish, you know, daily bag limits or whatever. You. So this is one bucket that's done. I'll give you a quick little run do, run through. There's 30 hooks in there. I've got another bucket there. These buckets are in the work process. Let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit. That's the work process there. And actually, that was a bucket I did yesterday, right there. Nice blue. Now this one was a different type of setup. This one is set up to where they have 15 and 15. So when they get out there, they can do a test run of putting out just 15, 15 baits at one time. And I actually dropped the bucket and pretty much that was the only hook that was kind of messed up, which you just saw me fix. If they see that there's potential and good fishing that day, then they can bump up to the 30 hooks. And still the same color co combination there. Now, there you can see that I did not do the twist effect because right here this is the ball of situation that it looks like once I just put on the swivels and this one's one why that flew in there trash cans right next to where I'm working so I was tossing it and I missed the trash can so I'm not a basketball player guys all right so on this one what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer everything from this bucket to another bucket and I'm gonna lay it flat yeah you know what I'll go ahead and do that right now. Yeah, let me go ahead and do that right now so that way if the customer comes and picks it up, it's ready to go and I don't have to backtrack again. Let's see this. <clears throat> how y'all doing today? Good, you? Doing all right. How can I help y'all? I'm going to show y'all the <laughs> Trick question, right? <laughs> yeah, but... Which weights are you talking about? Those weights or the other weights? We got surf weights too. Yeah. Because we're going to the event, I'll just 
Okay. And I used the pyramid weight. Okay. Which size? It's like 35 cents an ounce. The surf weights? Yeah. Only if you fish in an area where there's current. If you're not throwing in an area with current, then I wouldn't use them. And uh, I don't think I've fished Rivetta, so I don't know what area you're in, but if you. This is the question you got to ask yourself. When you cast out, does your weight and lines drift? If they do, then yeah, you can bump up to a surf weight and it'll keep them right in place where you cast out. Yeah. But if you throw out and they don't move, then I, I wouldn't use a surf weight. The current is it, the current's weird because it moves like. Yeah, one one day it's going to the right, one day it's going to the left. But if you're throwing out and there's and it's not moving, then no. don't throw a surf weight. But if it moves to the right or moves to the left, then yes, you would throw a surf weight to keep it in place. So yeah, it's not always, you're, you're not always gonna use them, but it's good to have them.
All right, so now that I've moved it over, now I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall it and get it there. I remember the reason why I had uh, problems with this system when I was putting it in the bucket was because this was the inner inner portion of the big spool that I had, so it had a lot of line memory. And at the time, I didn't have extra buckets, so I literally had to work from the floor into a bucket and didn't have the ability to sit there and spin the extra bucket that way so now that I do let's see how this works out for me so here we go
that's the uh, five setup right there. However, I'm learning that with this line being so close to the inner spool, I'm actually going to have to take it a step further because even though I've restacked it and tried to take out as much of the twist as I can, the monofilament has line memory. And the line memory is preventing me from laying it straight the way it's supposed to be inside the bucket. So what I'm going to have to do to erase that line memory is hit it with heat. Heat will get it to lay down and lay the way it's supposed to lay. And it'll lay down flat in the bucket. However, right now it's not doing it. So because of that reason, I'm not getting the good bucket that I want. And right now I don't have my hot air gun here at the, at the shop. I got it at the house without doing some other things there. So this bucket's gonna have to wait till, for another day because I cannot let it walk out of my shop like this because if it's gonna cause this much trouble for my customers then it defeats the purpose of making the job easier. And for this reason, this bucket will not be sold until I straighten out this issue. And literally, <laughs> I gotta straighten out the mono for it to lay right, and then I'll be able to do a good sell on it. So, like I said, you know, it's just the extra effort that we pay attention to on the details, and uh, we'll get it straight from there. But right now, <clears throat> I'm just gonna restock it in, into the bucket so I can continue on with the good lines that are working just great. It, it balled up more, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Mm. Ah. 